Walmart CEO Doug McMillan making a very big announcement yesterday. The company's stores will no longer sell short barrel rifle ammunition that can be used for military style guns. Walmart also eliminating handguns from stores in Alaska. It's the only remaining state uh, where they still carry them. Uh, as of the company's second quarter report in August, uh, Walmart held a 2% market share of firearms and a 20% market share of ammunition in the United States. In a statement, Walmart expressed confidence that these actions would cut down its market share of ammunition from 20% uh, down to 6 to 9%. Joining us right now to discuss Doug McMillan's strategy behind his decision to CNBC contributors this morning, Jeff Sonnenfeld, Senior Associate Dean for Leadership Studies at the Yale School of Management, and William Cohan, Vanity Fair Special Correspondent. Uh, good morning to both of you. Uh, Jeffrey, I'll start with you in terms of how you think that this changes the dynamic in the debate in terms of the role that Walmart's playing and whether you think other CEOs are going to be stepping out now as well. Uh, this is a giant watershed moment, and good for you, Andrew, in your open letter to Doug Miller of Walmart and others as a call to action, uh, like the, uh, the, the Davos in the desert uh, statement you had several months ago, I think almost a year ago, we've seen a big reaction uh, and in this case, this is a watershed moment. Uh, in the last hour, I heard uh, uh, Joe talk about how Nixon was hounded out by a hostile press, uh, President Nixon. And this is akin to the summer of, uh, of 74, when Johnny Carson, representing mainstream America, said it was time for Nixon to step down. That was, and he was very non-political. Doug McMillan, he, he's not. Uh, Joe was referring to these elitists from Vanity Fair and Yale. I guess he must be referring to Stephen Roach or uh, Bob Schiller. Is uh, that don't, don't sell uh, this, yourself is, short, this, Jeff. <laughs> this is mainstream America? You know, Doug McMillan is a 52 year old who spent 35 years inside Walmart uh, and a University of Arkansas graduate. We're looking at similar moves at Kroger's with their Fred Meyer stores, where they've done the same thing. Ed Stack. These are not elitist by any any stretch of the imagination, and we've seen a huge. Uh, a reaction across the face of other retailers who've already been moving in these directions, from Chili's to Chipotle to uh, Walgreens uh, to, to uh, you know, to obviously to, to Walmart. We've seen uh, guns are being banned from stores, uh, yeah, AMC theaters to Regal theaters. Is that this is uh, this is uh, there are more people in the country who believe we in, in, uh, that we need to have uniform background checks than believe we landed on the moon. Um. Bill, let me ask you, though, um, in terms of what kind of pushback you think will exist and also how far you think this, this takes, the, takes the debate and whether it really does change it. Well, uh, Andrew, uh, first of all, again, congrats to you for your outspokenness on this subject. It's uh, much needed, and thank you for using your platform for doing it, among other people. Uh, this will be a very sad chapter in American history when it gets written uh, mass shootings. And while I do applaud the Walmart CEO for taking this step, and I think it's a meaningful step that has to come from the marketplace, where is Congress? Where are our political leaders? Uh, their inability to act on this for so long is a true blemish on the American uh, political landscape. And until Congress acts, we're sort of left with these uh, uh, bits and pieces of action by marketplace, which I applaud. But, I mean, once upon a time, and it wasn't that long ago, in our lifetime, we had an assault weapons ban for 10 years from 1994 right. to 2004. Uh, what's it going to take to at least do that again at the congressional level? That Bill, is an but, obvious but thing. But here's that my we question. I'll ask it to, uh, to Jeff as well. In terms of how this debate plays itself out, these companies are making business decisions and often cases making business decisions ahead of what the law may ultimately uh, be. The question is whether they either should or can advocate for these positions in Washington. They've advocated uh, for positions around immigration before. They've advocated on, on lots of other issues. Is this still a third rail? Uh, no. I, this is definitely something where business, looking at uh, two weeks ago, the business roundtable statement, many of us were wondering and hoping that it was not going to be empty rhetoric. I think that was the steaming hot bowl of uh, oatmeal that, uh, that Sam Zell was uh, referring to generally when we had another speaker on earlier uh, uh, that, uh, that had once uh, talked about a lot of these cliches, is here they're putting it into action. It's not just empty words. Walmart is, uh, is uh, you know, 10 percent. It's 1.6 million employees. That's about 10 percent of the working population of the country. This is a very big statement, but he's gone further, as Doug McMillan has called on Congress to act uh, at the federal and state level, just as he did on an earlier issue having to do with the 
euphemistically called religious freedom acts, the bathroom bills. He and Randall Stevenson of AT&T and, and uh, David Abney of UPS, it was bedrock America who said, we don't want this kind of divisiveness. We've seen people call for action from Congress uh, before. Right. Uh, in, in this generation, we have these Gen Xers now in control of major corporations. It seems to be making a difference. S Sam Zell, you know, by you the way, the yeah. NRA was in favor, Bill, of what you were referring to, the 1994 uh, a crime Act and the 1934 uh, National Firearms Act, the NRA and the U.S. business community was in favor of those very effective regulations that sadly uh, uh, subsided. Hey, Sam Zell, you're in the you're in the you're in the, you're, you're square in the middle of the business community. Is this the right decision? What you see Walmart doing? Do you want that? Do you, do you want people entering this debate and dialogue? Well, I think what Walmart has done is very commendable. I think that the most important issue in this whole arena is to separate guns from guns. Uh, it's, what I do you mean, guns well, from guns? Well, I cannot understand why anybody needs to have an automatic weapon, period. There's just no, you know, you want to shoot deer, that's fine. Uh, you want to hunt, that's fine. But automatic weapons? Semi-automatic. Yeah, I mean, they just don't make any sense. Semi-automatics, are they're, they're, and, they're different. Uh, and, the, the and automatic you know, guns are... If you, need, if you need new legislation, the legislation ought to say, fine. If you want to shoot an automatic weapon or a semi-automatic weapon, you can only do that in a range, period. It never can said leave Sam, a range. Consistent with Sam's point, Sam's own senator, Dick Durbin, has said, if you need a semi-automatic to hunt deer, you should pick up fishing instead. I mean, it makes a mess out of the animal. It's not targeting better. This is it's crazy. It's reckless. It's, a, it's a, a dangerous, and it's not in support of what the 96 percent of the country says they want. And that's, uh, <coughs> it is time to pay attention. But, Andrew, you raised a question about this, uh, this response, the uh, larger response to the American business community. Joe was saying before, pass a law if you want to. Maybe we don't need laws. On this one, we do, but not on everything. Cornelius Vanderbilt said, said who cares about the law? The infamously uh, said this. He said, I got the power. The business community has the power to act. And we're seeing just last week uh, rollbacks by the EPA where right. the uh, natural gas and, uh, and, and oil companies are saying, you know what, we don't want those rollbacks. The auto industry is saying, uh, we don't want those rollbacks to the EPA. And they're going ahead and setting their own industry standards. That's pretty impressive rebuke. We've never seen that before. Jeff, what if the, the business community acts on something that you disagree with? The, in K, at, at University of Kansas right now, they don't want Chick-fil-A on their, their campus. The, let's say... And I'm not saying this about Chick-fil-A, but let's say there's a CEO who's very religious and who's anti-LGBT. Uh, and you would you call you know, Doug McMillan cowardly when he doesn't act and courageous when he does. If this man's own personal viewpoint is that he wants to discriminate against a whole group of the population, would you call him courageous by, by taking that tack? Or, or let's say someone's pro-life, Jeff. Let's say someone is rabidly pro-life and decides that everything he does in his corporation is, is against it pro law. Suddenly you're on the wrong side of the elitist uh, take on all these issues, Jeff, and, and, and you know, suddenly you, wouldn't, you probably wouldn't call those CEOs that courageous if I they were to do those no, things. No, I, I, I have served Chick-fil-A in my classes, and I get some reactions sometimes when we have a, a late class. And, but, but, uh, okay, answer complain. my point, though. I, my point is that, that as long as they come down on the right side, the politically correct no, side no, that, no. that you this decide is, this on... This is not that at all, Joe. Well, you just you're, take a you're look deciding at, which side the culture wars are, are correct look at what and which the American, side are not correct, Jeff. You're not in the position. You're self-anointed. You're self-anointed. I didn't anoint you. And what the American public wants... Now, if an issue of workplace practices or store hours like Chick-fil-A or, uh, or Hobby Lobby, as private companies, they're welcome to do whatever they want. As public companies, they have a different responsibility to take a look at what their constituents want and not just what the owners want, which is what a private company has the luxury of doing. Hobby Lobby, Chick-fil-A is a different situation. They're fully entitled to do what they want because they own their company. I, I know they're entitled, but consistent. it doesn't make it right, but, Jeff, and I don't know if I'd argue for it. And you would not is, argue for it if it, was, if it was something that you disagreed with or something that... 
you know, people in, 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 at Yale. It's or, not a question of personal habits. It's what the it's what their constituents are saying. You know, you, well, you, constituents you had, change. Uh, uh, even even 150,000 employees of Walmart over signed time, a, Jeff. Public opinion Walmart changes. Walmart employees signed signed a petition last week. 150,000 of them. I mean, that's a big statement. You're you're hearing this from customers, employees that they don't feel safe. That this is this is the reaction we're getting is because the, a CEO of a public company has to recognize they have a duties to a broader set of constituents, and and this is. And by the you way, just, the Dick's Sporting Goods that got really, rid of guns, those stores are doing better right. without the guns. And looks, they're looking at gutting, getting rid of guns completely at Dick's. And uh, so it's, it's not clear that this Companies is can do whatever doing they want. good and yeah, doing it's well true. or It's true. Public companies, and, and, and there will be some pushback against Walmart, but that's fine. But the bottom line is you do need to, if you need grassroots efforts to, to actually change the law, that's how we do things here. And eventually, but you had two thir if you had two-thirds of the states. Their own. If you had two thirds of the states, you could get the Second Amendment overturned if you wanted to. So, I mean, if that, and you got to elect the people that will vote for, you know, Bill doesn't like what Congress is doing. You need to elect the people in Congress that will do what you want to do. And, and you actually had President Obama and the House and the Senate could have could have reinstituted the assault weapons ban in, in 2008 easily. They, they, if they, because they had both houses of Congress and they had the the, the pen to sign it. So. Uh, and the once fact that they get, didn't do it is a mistake. Right. Okay. But you need that. That's what you're going to. You, you need to actually eventually change the laws. And if the public is at 70 or 80 or 90 percent, Jeff, that'll be possible to do that. That's we, how we, we change things miss, in this country. And, and Joe, sometimes you're right. We we do miss the moment, and it does take uh, CEOs who have a very powerful uh, platform and the general public to speak out and keep Congress on track uh, and the administration to, to do the right thing. Sometimes. Sometimes we miss the moment. Sometimes okay. we get caught up in nonsensical Jeff, Jeff. mythology. Some people believe that John Wayne, Sylvester Stallone, or, or Clint Eastwood were, were macho warriors. That's mythology. None of those guys ever went to battle. But we get dragged into all this. I think Clint Eastwood, Clint Eastwood was a lifeguard during hey, the Korean War. Say, okay, the, the Jeff. All right, all right, all right. Jeff, let's say that you have a CEO that fully embraces the Green New Deal, as, as seen by some of the far left, that AOC or... I don't know. There's a three three trillion dollar new has green to be deal. To the extreme, no, I'm not taking it to the extreme. But should that CEO, should they only stock Kroger with Beyond Meat? Is, should that, should he take a courageous step and not, do no with, more with, beef? Or, if or he thinks it's good for his business. Sure. Right, but you're going to get pushback from from customers. Sure, but if he thinks that he can sell more, if he believes that he can, he it is going to be better for his business. What if it has and that, more it, what, responsible I to think, his community? No, he's saying rather, more rather than his customers, sleep. then he should rather sell Beyond sleep Meat over a shot. He shouldn't. Should you at 7 Eleven decide not to sell gasoline to any SUVs because you should get at least 30 miles per gallon? The CEO is taking a courageous stand on climate change. Joe, is that okay? Joe, the issue we're talking about is that are going is, beyond the law. I understand the point, that. The point is that the law itself is not the. You can say it's the ultimate arbiter of this, but business can, can make their own decisions. What we, just saw, what we just saw last month is we saw uh, uh, four major automakers say the administration, the EPA, are wrong, is that we're going to work with California to set higher efficiency standards, to have 50 miles a gallon uh, that we can do by 2026. And the administration says, no, go for 36. They said, no, we want to sell not just to California, 19 other states who care, but the rest, Europe and the rest of the world. And we as automakers, the heck with you. We're going to continue to, to advance on our standards. The same with the power industry that's already invested the $9.6 billion to clean, the methane, to clean out the, uh, the emissions that they were worried about, the mercury. And the government says, stop doing it. They said, no, no, we've already invested it. We want to reap the benefits of it. Is that it's great for industry to speak back. And if, in terms of this situation, Joe, the minority we care about, is suddenly in Congress, we care about the diminishing strength of the NRA that used to be in favor. They were originally a gun safety organization themselves. And the legislation that Bill talked about before in 1934 and 1994, they were in favor of it. So for whatever tortured political dynamics there are inside the diminishing NRA, instead of paying attention to that, business leaders should be concerned about the backlash of all their constituents. As a business person, what's good for the business? Mm -hmm. What are the owners? What are the employees? Right. What are the communities? What do the customers want? Jeff, I want to give a, a word to Sam. Ellen, I know that Bill has been waiting patiently. Sam. Well, I, well, just, I mean, oh, I what, just, I, what I want to say oh, here is. Go ahead. Well, go ahead, Sam. No, I was just going to say, you know, you got to be really careful that you all of a sudden uh, pile on responsibilities and moral positions on CEOs who are basically in the middle of a, of a market world that they have to compete with. And uh, I think that you got to be real careful that you don't get too high on your hog uh, advocating issues. Too late. 
You know, I just, I just think it's, uh, uh, I think it's dangerous, and and I don't think CEOs are protected enough to take those kinds of positions. Okay. Final word to Bill. Well, what I would say is, last time I checked, we're still a free country, uh, and you know, if a CEO. Uh, wants to take a strategic position on something that's relatively controversial that might uh, upset a lot of his customers or shareholders or constituents, and it gets it through the board, and he wants to take that position. And if consumers don't like that, they'll vote with their feet. If they still want meat, they won't shop at a Kroger that only sells Beyond Meat. If they still want guns and ammunition, they were not going to sh shop at Walmart anymore. And you know what? It'll all get figured out. But we need, unfortunately, real leadership in Congress. Mitch McConnell needs to get off his butt and pass this legislation because it is a blemish on the American society at this point.